free motion quilting. Now that's a technique that many quilters wouldn't consider a beginner technique. Not so according to today's guest on Sewing with Nancy. Welcome Molly Hansen who taught herself to do the free motion quilting very early in her career. It's good to have you here Molly. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I'm really excited to show how you you can quilt on free motion mm -hmm. quilting and install confidence in new quilters and I think we're going to have a lot of fun. I've got seven different designs. It can be just as easy as writing your own name and mm -hmm. if you can write your own name I'm, I'm convinced you can free motion quilt so I'm excited to show you that. I know you will. Free motion quilting for beginners, that's what's next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture, custom built in America. Clover. Making a difference in sewing, quilting, crafting, and needle arts for over 30 years. Amazing designs and Class A needles. As with any sewing or quilting project, the first step is to set up this machine. And Molly, this is really pretty easy. Straight stitching. Yep. And that's what you have your machine set? Yeah, any machine will work. Any size machine, it doesn't really matter how big the throat space is. And as long as you've got it on a straight stitch, and then you want to put your feed dogs down, and that's here on this machine. Mm -hmm. Every machine will be a little bit different. You check your owner's manual to lower or sometimes uh, cover, cover your feed dogs, cover depending the feed dogs. on the machine. Mm -hmm. So simple process there. And then the foot is important. The foot needs to ride just a little bit above the fabric. And so they'll either it'll be plastic or metal for a darning or free motion quilting foot that you'll have with your machine. You if can you don't have, have open one. toe or closed toe depending yep. on what you prefer. And then thread. Right. I use cotton thread typically, but you could use cotton or cotton polyester depending on what you like, but it should be a strong thread. And this is a little different than maybe some people are accustomed to using the same thread in the bobbin. I do. I recommend using the same as in the bobbin. That way, if there are any little tension mm -hmm. hiccups, you're not going to see one color come through. And by setting them both at the same, or by using them both the same uh, threads, I feel like it just makes everything go a lot smoother. And this is Less for problems. beginners. This is for experienced people. Right. We all want to have ease, right? Right. <laughs> And it's a new project, so start with a new needle, a quilting needle, a top stitching needle. I, I like a top stitching needle, I felt the or a quilting needle, yeah, the, mm -hmm. the thread just glides through better than a universal. So now there are some accessories that you could use, but they're not mandatory. Not required, but sometimes they can make life easier, so mm -hmm. it's always nice to know about them. Like this uh, silicone sliding mat that you can just put and line up so that uh, your needle doesn't pierce through it, but it'll help everything just glide along a lot faster or a lot smoother and easier. So. It's kind of like ice skating. Yes, exactly. Especially if you've got a, a bigger quilt with some drag, mm -hmm. it can really help you out. And then another thing that people like to use, I, I don't typically wear them, I live where I live it's hot, <laughs> and so my, my hands get hot, but a lot of people really like these because of the grip on the fingers and it helps them move the, uh, the quilt around a lot easier. So this is a common, common sure. tool to make free motion quilting easier. Now you'll see throughout this series that we're going to be stitching the various free motion designs on samples. And Molly, you don't throw away these samples. No, no, I'm, I don't like waste, so I like to find fun things to do with them. <laughs> and you'll see that as we go through this program, but they're 12 inch samples top fabric, bottom fabric, yeah. and then the batting. Right, right. And we're using a, uh, we're using a fusible batting for this and um, you can use any kind of batting, a cotton polyester mm -hmm. batting, a regular cotton batting. For this quilt here, of course, you'd want to use something soft like a cotton, but for these, we're using a fusible. It gives the project a little extra body because it's a fusible fleece. It's a little heavier, and it works really well for three-dimensional projects especially. But it only has fusible on one side. That's so right. you fuse it to the top layer, and then for these small samples, right. that, you don't really need That's anything adequate. else. Yeah. But you could pin it in the corners, I suppose, if you'd like. Mm -hmm. And then if you didn't have fusible fleece, you just could use curved basting pins? You could, or you could use the, uh, the spray. Yes, there's adhesive quilting spray. That's right. And that can I make like to use this sparingly, yeah. personally, but yes, you can put all the layers together. So 
Now we have the setup, the setup at the machine, the setup for your sample to practice, and then eventually to make projects. So the next thing we're going to do is our first design, which is stippling. The most common free motion quilting technique is stippling. Its versatility, light texture, and ability to blend and not compete with the piecing make it a favorite among quilters. Here's the beginner's guide to stippling. Now you just saw Molly's creation of just a simple placemat and pot holder. Pot holders in my house don't look this nice, Molly. <laughs> well, that one hasn't seen any real use yet. So. <laughs> but you can see that overall design, and it's just pleasant. And but I have to admit, many quilters steer away from this because they think it's too difficult. Right. Right. Yeah. And stippling. Stippling isn't very difficult, you just have to get the feel of it. It's all about muscle memory, just like everything else. So. Muscle memory, now that's a great term to keep in mind. Right. And you start muscle memory by doing some sketching. I really, yeah, I recommend sketching. I feel like you can really work out the kinks mm -hmm. when you sketch. And if you, if you put your pen to the paper and you never leave it, you'll really get the same technique and feel as you would when you're actually quilting. So it'll give you a really good solid practice. So I like to work out my designs and sketch them first and then I always feel much more comfortable when it's mm -hmm. time to move to the needle. And the key, as you just said, your pen doesn't leave the paper. Pen does not leave the paper and that helps you so much. And I like to make round use little puzzle shape type designs and fit them in wherever you can and just wiggle and wobble and you just really get a feel for it once you get going. And that's the way you'll manage or handle the fabric underneath the presser foot. And that foot is raised just a little bit above the fabric so it will glide. glide right. Just like the so pen. Your hands, you, mm -hmm. yeah, the pen is the needle and your hands are the paper and you move the paper instead of the, but mm -hmm. the concept is generally sure. the same. So. so when you begin, you sit up straight. Yes, posture is important. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna have a, a nice 90 degree line here with your mm -hmm. elbow and so if you're too short or you're sitting too short or sitting too tall and you, you don't have this you're going to get sore after a while so it's really important to make sure you're set up properly for maximum success. <laughs> and then after setting up your sewing machine which we did in our last segment you're going to drop the bobbin thread. Right, right. So that's the first step and what you want to do is just put your needle down and then put it back up and then if you do this and pull this string, then you, your thread comes right up and you're ready to go. So so you have the bobbin thread, the top thread, mm -hmm. lower the presser foot again. Yep. And then... I like to take a few stitches in place just to kind of lock mm -hmm. that in. And so I always start with just a few stitches before I move on to start stippling. And do your magic. All right, here we go. Oh. And those little puzzle piece ends. And what I like about your technique is that you don't have to have it so small right away. Oh no, yeah, especially when you're practicing. It's nice to sometimes practice on different scales, but I think you really want to be able to see what you're doing. And so I envision a real puzzle piece, a jigsaw puzzle piece, and you can go big or small or whatever, but just try to make them link. and. Now, as you're Curve. sewing, you know, we didn't really talk about cleaning the machine. Right. You know, that's a really important step and one I think is so commonly overlooked. People forget that their machine is doing a lot of hard work and really needs to be taken well care of. And the lint buildup that you can get with free motion quilting is just incredible. And so, if you're not careful, and you don't clean it regularly, it can put a lot of extra stress on your machine. And oiling is also very important for that reason. And while you're doing your sample, you can check the tension because I think we need a little tension check. Why yes, don't you show do. that we purposely do this, you know, to show Absolutely. our mistakes that we can make them too. But you have a little bit of a spider web shot. Right, I do. And this is exactly what we don't want. Um, and this is why we use the same color thread in the mm -hmm. bobbin and the top because if we didn't and this was a different color, you'd really notice it. But sure. if you're a few feet away now, you'd barely <laughs> notice it. So then in your sample, you can change the tension uh, and now just I'm practice. Gonna, yep, I'm going to increase mine here because I know it's not quite set the way I had it and this will work better for me. So, but you can increase or decrease and you should try both and see what's gonna 
not give you that spider web look. So. so as she's working on this, I'll just show you the stippling all over technique and that you can make them large, you can make them small, and it's a great place to start your journey of free motion quilting. What free motion design should I quilt first? Where should I start? These are questions that you might ask yourself. Molly's answer is start by stitching your name. You've certainly written it thousands of times, so why not try to stitch it? The basic loop-de-loop -loop design, just like cursive, allows you the freedom to incorporate words into free motion quilting designs. Well, Molly, working with this design and these cute little accessory organizers that you made, this one says keys <laughs> in the inside, but it's kind of keys in reverse right here on the darker <laughs> Easier to side. Read it on the darker yeah. side. Yeah, but you can see the loop-de-loop -loop as well as on the practice sure. sample that you've created. And you said love is a great word. Love is a great word. And I love loop-de-loop -loop and how versatile it is. Mm -hmm. and, and it really is like baby cursive, like a little E or a little L. And so the, the design uh -huh. just really blends beautifully with classic cursive writing. And you can incorporate really any word, although Ones to start off with, maybe avoid a T or an I at the first, because these could be a little tricky. So sure. words like love really do work well. Or Nancy. <laughs> or Nancy, Nancy or Molly. There you go. So you can do some practicing yeah. first. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I'll show you what it looks like on, on the sketchbook. Like I said, I always think you should start, start sketching first. And so make sure and your pen doesn't leave the paper and just start making random loops and let the pen go wherever you want. And make a loop and then when you get to a nice area where you've got some open space you just go into your cursive writing and I like to think second grade cursive lessons you know nice basic round just like your your teacher taught you back in the day <laughs> and then you can go right back into the loop-de-loop -loop without ever even breaking your design the way your hand moves is the way your both hands are going to move the fabric right exactly Really, the pen is like the needle, and the paper is like the fabric. So it's, it's the opposite, but once you get the design worked out in your brain, then you can focus on all the other steps you need to, to stitch it well. But it helps really a lot to get it worked out on paper first, just so you know what to do next, and there's no guessing. And so that's what that looks like when you... Very nice. So now to translate that to the fabric, Molly's already drawn up the bobbin thread and, right. and uh, holds right. the threads taut. Right. Same settings as before. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take a few stitches in place just to lock in sure. those stitches. And then we'll just get going with this design. And you just want to curve around and make a loop every now and again. Just be real relaxed about it. This is one to really make sure your shoulders are soft and you're not holding too much tension in your arms and shoulders and you're relaxed and it helps make everything look nice and round and pretty. I mm. have to say, when I first did free motion quilting, I held my breath. Ah, <laughs> not a good idea. No. <laughs> so then when you come to a nice open space, you just start slowly quilting your words. And, you know, take your time with it and. Try not to focus so hard you forget how to spell, which does happen from time to time. <laughs> and I think what we need to point out is watch Molly as she quilts. You know, she's not, it's not a race. No. And she's moving the fabric very slowly, maybe sewing at a medium speed. And when you're first beginning, that's a really good idea not to try to rush yourself too much. You've got plenty of time. Because if you push the fabric too fast, the needle could break. It could, or the thread could break, and uh, it, yeah. So you want to avoid that and just go nice and slow and smooth, and that way your stitching feels more regular and it all just gets a rhythm together, which is really what you're looking for. And so then I can go into another word right here. There, Molly, you yeah. got it. There. there we go. Excellent. And that's what that looks like. Very fun. Thank you. And you'll see later as we incorporate some of these other designs that you can put a variety of free motion designs and combine them as we have here. 
Pebbles and Chains consists of a space filled with as many touching circles as possible. Pebbles can fit just about anywhere. Even a single row of pebbles, called Chain of Pearls, can be beautiful in very small spaces. When Molly was introducing me to free motion quilting for beginners, I said, this is one thing I want to master. I really think this texture is great. And look at the chain of pearls. It can be big, it can be small. It, it has great appeal to me. And wait till you see this sample, the sample that she worked on. Look at that texture, just changing a piece of fabric. And Molly, your pebbles don't have to all be the same size. No, mm -hmm. no, varying actually gives them more realistic look. So yeah, that's the fun of it. You really can go crazy with it or make them look like bubbles or pearls and oh, make them all sure. the same size. So as much fun as you want to have and creative as you want to get. So. Now this is a time where you must, you must sketch. It really helps. It really does mm -hmm. because this muscle memory is when you really need to learn. It's, it's a little counterintuitive, but once you get it, it's very simple. So basically when you're when you're trying to do a chain, of, uh, a chain of pearls or two circles next to each other, your tendency is always going to want to be to make a figure eight because that's just the oh, way sure. your mind naturally works. But you want to avoid that tendency and start with a circle and then go back over it a little bit and then make your next circle and go back over and make another one. And what you get that way is nice nesting of the two circles together versus mm -hmm. if you were to do a figure eight, you would get two teardrop shapes together, which don't really look like pebbles once they're all stacked. So that's why this muscle memory really is important. And once you get going and you get used to going back over your lines a little bit, it's a lot easier. Now, some people think of free motion quilting never to cross lines. That's not important. No, no, it really isn't. And it, it really depends on the design. Sometimes the designs really require it. Yes. So, so this, this time, you know, if you go back over your lines, if you want to go all the way back around, it'll just add more texture and more sure. depth. And so, and you might need to, to get to where you need to move to the next time. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's just the way, but you definitely don't want to just go right into your next circle. You always want to give yourself a little bit of space to nest that up nicely so it looks like a circle and not a teardrop shape. So once you got the concept down in your mind, on your, in your hands, you can go to fabric. Right, right. So let me show you that that looks like on fabric. <clears throat> We're always going to take a few stitches in place, get going. And with pebbles, again I'm going to go back over my line a little bit and vary the size as much as I can. I like that look because it looks more natural to me. Mm -hmm. And that just helps you go where you need to go. And we were even talking about a chain of pearls and if you wanted to do that, you can fit that into any border and all a chain of pearls is is a single row of pebbles. But you can just go along a row and or a line and do a single row. And this fits great into border designs mm -hmm. or in like the spine of a feather when you get oh, a little further down, the further down the road in your quilting. So yeah, it's fun. You know, I, I've stippled many, many quilts, especially landscape quilts. And all I do is a stippling or maybe a little leaf design. And this, these ideas give me so much more flexibility. Yeah. Oh, I they, can't wait to try it. They are a lot of fun. I have tried it, but can't wait to really do it. <laughs> there you go. So notice again, I keep pointing out the speed of which Molly's working, the, the ease. You want to really keep relaxed. That's the ticket. If you stress out, it's going to show in your quilting and your lines will be jagged and they just won't look as pretty. So the softer and more relaxed you are, the better your quilting will look. We've shown you three techniques in this first program of the series, and you just saw the pebbles, big, small. We're going to do the wood grain in the next program. Here you can see the all-over stippling, the writing of the words, and what interest it can bring to a basic quilt design, all for beginners or experienced quilters.
From a colored pencil drawing to appliques, sixth graders learn to take their art to a new medium. Please welcome Maria de Groot. Thank Maria you. is an involved mom and a quilting enthusiast who volunteers at her children's school to teach the art of quilting. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy, Maria. Thank you so much. Now, <clears throat> you are an enthusiastic quilter, as I stated, and you mm -hmm. found that your kids were learning about radial art in class. Yes. And you've made quilts from their projects. I did. I did. Here's the quilt, and give us a little rundown. We'll show the process, but this is an amazing okay. quilt. Okay. Um, the kids do this radial art design in the fall. So they start with um, just a pencil drawing of their name in an eighth of the pie of a circle. Mm -hmm. And she has them mirror image it and then repeat it to form what I thought were medallions. I didn't realize it was their names and it hung on the hall for a long time and I kept walking by going, that has got to be a quilt. That needs to be a quilt. <laughs> and you <clears throat> made it happen. I did. I convinced the art teacher to let me come in and do art with them in the spring. So they did the pencil drawing in the fall and then we transferred it to fabric in the spring. This is a great process and Maria made for me uh, my own <laughs> quilt block and yeah. why don't you go over the process with sure. our viewers. Um, I started with a circle and then folded it into eight pieces like a piece of pie. In one of the pieces of pie I wrote Nancy's name. And then they used chalk to it's actually a charcoal pencil. Excuse me. And mm -hmm. you draw over it and then flip it to get that mirror image and draw over it again. So sometimes at the end, their original pattern is destroyed <laughs> sure. from drawing through it. So here's what they do. Here's my Nancy, mm -hmm. and then Nancy and a mirror image, yep. and then times eight yeah. or four of each. And depending how the yeah. kids arrange their letters, it can have a very symmetrical look like this, or it can have a very um, chunky or real artistic looking design when they're done. And then they get to choose color. Yeah. And what do you tell them about color at this point? Um, at this point, I have nothing to do with it. When they're doing <laughs> the color pencil, that's all the art teacher. Um, when I come in in the spring is when I have a few things to share with them. And here's kind of what you, mm -hmm. the process. Yep. From that circle, I use paper-backed fusible web. So if you look at the art along with it, all of the ends on the outside mm -hmm. are drawn here. And by fusing it to the back side of the fabric, I've now created fabric ends instead of colored pencils. So then they have to do that with all of the letters in their circle. And here we go. Yeah. So here is the radial art in fabric form. So they go from paper to fabric. Really, really fascinating. Yeah. And I make them do all the tracing. They do all of their own cutting and they even iron everything on. So some of them aren't exactly circle when we're done. Oh, that's okay. When I, because I can <laughs> sew, I can fix that later on. Sure. <laughs> so you then fuse it and mm -hmm. I, do the stitching. I do. Lay it out in a great black background. If we take another look yeah. at the the yeah. big quilt and some of the medallions, the mm -hmm. name medallions, why don't we start with Hope? Sure. So here you can see the Hope circle and okay. that one's pretty distinguishable. It is. It is. With only four letters, the letters are quite large and that is a little bit easier to see. And another one you'd like to share? Um, Regan is another one. She has crossed over her E's and some of the letters, so they're mixed up a little bit, but her name still goes from the outside in. And the fun colors that they all chose mm -hmm. and worked with. Yeah, I brought in a bucket of fabric, <laughs> and I said, here's your new colors. So they could do what they did with colored pencil, but mm -hmm. I told them they are the artists, just like they were in the beginning. Sure. They're recreating their art into another form, so go ahead and pick what they like. And let's look at one more. How about, um, well, Josh is red, white, and blue. He's mm -hmm. hard to see, but it is a very cool effect, too. Uh-huh. And he did that in honor of? Of a relative that's in the service, so that was kind of cool. And Maria used this as a fundraiser. I did. The quilt is um, donated to the school. They have an auction in September, so I have the second quilt in progress already Good for you. and well, my own child will be in the third one this year so well, that's kind of fun. Well what a great th what a great project. Thank yeah. you for sharing this. You're what welcome. a great story. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. 
And I hope that you've enjoyed this segment of Sewing with Nancy and will be back with us next time for the second part of our program on free motion quilting for beginners. And if you'd like to find out more information, go to nancyzeman.com where you can re-watch this program. You can click on videos, watch Four Seasons and Programming and find out more of Nancy's Corner Guests. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Molly Hansen has written the Free Motion Quilting for Beginners book that serves as a reference for this two-part series. The book includes the fundamentals of free motion quilting along with 10 practical projects. It's $19.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2819. Order item B1248. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyseaman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding provided by Pellon. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.